Today is the 22nd of July, which means that it's Pi Approximation Day, so named after the exceptionally good rational approximation of 22 over 7, to the well-known irrational constant Pi. So we have Pi equals to 3.14159 dot 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 and 22 over 7 equals to 3.14285 7 dot dot dot. Now this decimal expansion never repeats since pi is an irrational number, while this one repeats every six digits, starting from this 142857 and it repeats 142857, 142857, and so on. I'm not I'm going to write all of that out. So, what do we mean by an exceptionally good rational approximation here? A typical rational approximation to a real number, let's call it x, and we call it a rational approximation a over b, subject to the constraints of a and b being co-prime, so the greatest common divisor is 1, and b is positive, and a can be any integer including 0. So a uh, typical rational approximation a over b to a given real number x, the best we can say about this is that we can choose a so that this thing is less than 1 over 2b, but in general, we cannot guarantee a smaller error than this. And, this is, and the way we choose A to get this error bound is to take A to be the closest possible value. So you round Bx to the nearest integer. And if it's midway between two integers, then we it doesn't matter whether we round out or round out. And either way, we'll get, the, we'll get exactly an error of 1 over 2b. So what we mean by exceptionally good rational approximation is that the error is much less than 1 over 2b. So for example, uh, if you want the error to be less than 1 over d squared, and such rational approximations uh, will always exist for irrational numbers. So for example, uh, if we take square root of 2, then it has, the, it has the rational approximations of that satisfy this criterion of uh, 3 over 2, I believe, and 7 over 5, 17 over 12, and so on. 41 over 29, 99 over 70, and yeah, etc. I did not prepare that ahead of time, so I don't remember. And we can verify that this 22 over, 22 over 7 does happen to satisfy this stricter version, this stricter bound, this stricter error bound compared to the garden variety rational approximations. So 22 over 7, pi minus 22 over 7, so x equals to pi, a equals to 22, b equals to 7, and we can verify that the greatest common divisor of 22 and 7 is 1, b is positive, and a is an integer. So this thing goes to the absolute value of 3.14159 dot dot minus 3.14857 dot dot dot. This thing is approximately 0.0012. And compared to 1 over b squared, so 1 over b squared is 1 over 7 squared here, is 1 over 49, and this is approximately 0.02. And clearly, this is much smaller than this much smaller than this, by a factor of about 20. So this is how we can verify that 22 over 7 is indeed a very good rational approximation to pi. But this relies on already knowing what the value of pi is. So for example, if we want to determine this from first principles, how would we do that? So consider the integral of this thing, x power 4, multiplied by 1 minus x, bracket, power 4, divided by 1 plus x squared, dx. And we can just easily evaluate this by expanding the numerator and doing long division and blah blah blah. This is very standard calculus stuff. If you expand the top, then we get x power 8 minus 4, x power 7, plus 6 x power 6 minus 4 x power 5 plus x power 4 divided by 1 plus x squared dx. 
and these are just the binomial coefficients for the fourth law of Pascal's triangle and we do the long division we try to factor out 1 plus x squared this thing becomes like x power 6 minus 4x power 5 plus 5x power 4 minus 4x squared plus 4 with a remainder of minus 4 this minus 4 is not multiplied with this 1 plus x squared dx and we remove we cancel out the 1 plus x squared uh, x power 6 minus 4x5 5x4 4x squared 4 and minus 4 over 1 plus x squared this thing is still within the still at a fraction since it doesn't have a 1 plus x squared in the numerator in this part Dx. And this is these are just this part is just a normal polynomial, so we can it's quite easy to integrate that. This is like seven x power seven over seven minus four x power six over six plus five x power five over five minus four x cubed over three plus four x. And the way you integrate this is well you Basically, you have to already know what the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is. And 1 over 1 plus x squared is... The integral of that is the arctangent... Oh, I ran out of space on paper. Arctangent of x. So, this thing is minus 4 times the arctangent of x. And the integration limits are 0 and 1. And then we just plot in. If we plot in 0, then all of these terms become 0. x power, 0 power anything is 0. So all of these, these first five terms become 0. And our tangent of 0 is still 0. So this also becomes 0. So we only need to care about what happens when x goes to 1. So 1 power anything is 1. So that's quite simple. This becomes 1 over 7 minus 4 over 6. So that's 2 thirds plus 5 over 5, that's 1, minus 4 over 3, plus 4, minus 4 times of arctangent of 1. The arctangent of 1 is, uh, let me just draw a quick right angle triangle. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so when the opposite and adjacent sides are the same, this means that this is an isosceles right angle triangle. So this angle and this angle are the same, which means that they must both be 45 degrees or pi over 4 in radians. So pi over 4 multiplied by 4 is just pi. And this thing, we can easily add it up. So 1 plus 4 is 5, minus 2 thirds minus 4 thirds. So this minus 2 thirds and minus 4 thirds together become minus 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 plus 1 over 7 is 22 over 7, 3 and 1 7 minus 4 times of pi over 4, so that's minus pi. And this thing we just evaluated here is approximately 0 0.0012. So why is this value so small? We can look at what happens in the numerator and what happens in the, what happens in the denominator, and from there we can see a reason that this value happens to be as small as it is. So we look at the graphs of the functions y equals x, y equals 1 minus x. And the midpoint is half. So, what happens when you multiply these two functions together? What you get is something that looks like this a parabola and since this these two functions are just mirror images of each other along the x equals half axis the product of these will also be symmetrical along the x equals half axis so zero half one and the midpoint evaluates to half since 
yeah, half multiplied by 1 minus half, which is also half. So this is 1 quarter. So the peak of this thing is at 1 quarter. And this thing is actually a parabola. Y equals x times 1 minus x. Or if you expand this out, this is x minus x squared. <laughs> but we'll write it in the x times 1 minus x form since that will be more convenient for our purposes. So, what we actually have in the numerator is the fourth power of this thing. And this thing is always less than 1 over 4. So x power 1 minus x is always between 0 and 1 quarter for x in this area. So we don't care about what happens when x is less than 0 or when x is greater than 1 since we are only doing the integral from 0 to 1. And if we take this to the fourth power, then we get x power 4, 1 minus x, power 4, 1 over 4, power 4. And this thing equals to 1 over 256, which is, well, obviously less than 1 over 49. And what about the denominator 1, 1 plus x squared? So, Again, we can draw a graph, just for the sake of drawing graphs, since drawing graphs is good. Having some visualization often helps in knowing how things behave. So at 0, the function takes on the value 1. At 1, the function takes on the value 2. And it looks something like this. Probably not exactly to scale, but you get the idea. So this thing is always between 1 and 2. as long as x is between 0 and 1. And the reciprocal of this, well, then you just flip the whole thing over. So, now that we have this thing is less than 1 over 256, and this thing is always between half and one, then we can conclude that x4 times 1 minus x power 4 divided by 1 plus x squared is always between 0 and uh, 1 over 256 multiplied by 1. These are all positive or rather non-negative ranges, so we can safely multiply them without caring, without having to worry about negative signs changing the direction of our inequalities and we can safely do this. So this thing, 1 over 256, less than 1 over 49. And if you integrate this over an interval of length 1, or is that our off frame? If you integrate this thing over a, an interval of length 1, what we're actually doing is that we have this upper bound of 1 over 256, and our actual function looks something like this, y equals x power 4, 1 minus x power 4, divided by 1 plus x squared. We don't actually care about how far below or how near to the top, how near to the, how near to the upper bound this function is, as long as it's between 0 and 1 over 256. So the area underneath this thing, which is the integral over here, has to be at most the area of the whole rectangle here. And the area of this rectangle is 1 over 256 multiplied by the width of the interval, which is 1. Is that within frame? Yes. So you know, this is just 1 over 256. And this is why 22 over 7, and this is how we can show that 22 over 7 is indeed an exceptionally good approximation to pi without knowing the value of pi beforehand. And in fact, this actually also shows that 22 over 7 is an overestimate to pi rather than an underestimate, since this thing is always positive. 